Hello there guys and welcome welcome back to the channel so we have well technically two wars in this one video but in the first one against AF I barely ended up doing anything so it's just the two fights but one of them is definitely well worth showing I suppose both of them are and then we're gonna get to more serious and interesting war against JA who are obviously a very strong top three level alliance and uh, that was super super important war and i had some quite interesting fights using a champion that i absolutely love so uh let's just get to it uh entering this war this is war number four new nation is 2-1 so we are trying to you know get on track to fight for the top and this first fight is on path nine um shock and bleed ebony maw and I'm using Odin's pre-fight to basically make this fight doable with Human Torch. Where I'm basically going to be hitting this Ebony Maw whilst the shock phase is active. And uh, thanks to that, I kind of don't have anything to worry about. Then I just choose to wait, go in and do a couple of hits whilst uh, the bleed is active. When I get one or two bleeds, it doesn't matter too much. So looking at the health pool battle, we can see that this is obviously how Human Torch Ebony Maw fights go, and there's just not much happening. So with Odin's pre-fight, when you see Mystics on Path Knight, you can definitely touch them. And this next fight, this is actually my first time ever using uh, Infamous Iron Man against uh, Bishop, ever, let alone in a war. So I knew that Infamous Iron Man's basically designed to absolutely nuke this guy down. And is like arguably the best bishop counter in the game. So we are going to test that out. So I'm going to be hitting him during the shock phase. Because Infamous Iron Man doesn't have any protection against bleed. So I will be trying to wait out all the bleed phases. And other than that, obviously the cool thing is that whenever we do shock him. Uh, we're, and whenever he would gain prowess. He gets those energy vulnerabilities. There the one scary bit was that his special attack was unblockable but even with that i wasn't too worried because there was no prowess attached to it and luckily we managed to full dex that i get to level two and that level two just does quite filthy amount of damage at this point he has like 15 energy vulnerabilities and uh, he does get me a bit but yeah uh that that barely tickled and we did end up winning this war uh, i believe we died only once uh and that was a very, very solid outcome. Obviously, I had very little to do with it. Now for the next war against JA, Jedi Assassins. Again, uh, definite top three alliance. We knew that we had to play basically our best. It was a very, very important war. And luckily, I got to use my rank five Kingpin in this war. Kingpin was not banned. And uh, I managed to take full advantage of it. Basically, every single fight in this war is going to be with Kingpin. And I'm starting on here on path four. And with that, uh, we're just going to max boost. Basically, first fight here is going to be Crossbones. And he's going to get his Fury, which is fine. We don't stress about that too much. We can see that uh, I get those Furies as well, because I end up purifying a lot of debuffs. He does have... He is a Tactic Defender, so he has a combat power rate increase whenever I take a hit of his in a block but at the same time i do have mr sinister synergy and it actually stuck which allows me to be quite aggressive now we're here getting a couple of intercepts in and we can see that crossbones is already at like 45 percent health only i get to use my level two which puts him at like five percent and uh, i didn't even need to bait out that level one i should have just played on my unstoppable but we finished this with a perfect 100 health and god i love kingpin because he's just so so good and uh, here, moving on, I need to go and deal with this Terax to uh, unlock section 2 for my teammates. I actually got tagged at 3 a.m. by my teammate asking if I can clear it. Obviously, I didn't read it till morning, but I just found it funny. It's like 3 a.m. Uh, okay, that's fine. Uh, but going up against Terax, the base point is that uh, there is power snack, so he can eat my overpowers. Otherwise, this fight would be close to over already. But I did manage to get my second overpower before uh, power snack kind of reset. And then here I do get hit a few times. Luckily I did put up an indestructible boost. But everything is fine. I'm going to go for another level 1 that reduces obviously Terex attack significantly. I'm just going to wait for 
the rock field here to expire, not to take more unnecessary damage. And then I'm going to drop another level one and the degens basically putting in all the work I could possibly wish for. And the scary power snack Terax is just clapped like nobody's business. Next up, I need to go and deal with that Mephisto on path four yet again. And I'm still going to be using my Kingpin. Obviously, Kingpin is not incinerate immune. But Kingpin's awesome. And that's all we need. So it's steady build up unblockable and whatnot. So Mephisto is going to be unblockable for the majority of this fight. But again, I don't mind too much. And the base idea here is again just spam your level once and uh, the rest of the stuff won't matter. It's just an unblockable Mephisto. Initially, obviously, I can't gain buffs due to Mephisto's soul imprisonment. And uh, there he does trigger his aura, which is perfectly fine. Now he activates his level one, which also allows me to go unblockable because whenever I purify debuffs, uh, I get the same unblockable, but for the vast majority, we can see that Mephisto stays unblockable, but uh, when I do actually get my rage, then everything's fine, and at that, I actually ended up eating that level 1, which I didn't really mind. It didn't really do anything to me. That, that, that was a cheeky belly bump. I did, did want to get in a belly bump in this as well, and uh, now Mephisto is... <laughs> I don't know why I kept running in those level ones, but again, it didn't really matter. A couple more hits, finish with full health, even though I ran in two of the level ones. That just shows how busted Kingpin is, uh, that you don't need to be on your best behavior. Now, this fight, slightly scarier. This fight is null, and null spending the entire fight unblockable can go wrong, because if he does use his level one, fight can go downhill very, very fast. On the bright side, I have Kingpin, <laughs> and that, uh, well, here, this actually was kind of perfect initially, because that let me get rid of Nulls and Blockable, and uh, so I did end up eating a couple of hits, but uh, here I do drop my level 1, so now, as soon as my level 1 degen is active, the fight immediately becomes a lot safer, because even if I do happen to make a mistake, then it hurts a lot less. And now he's also power locked. I'm going to go for another level one. I know that Degen does less damage against Null, but we're fine. He's still unblockable, but he's at 7% uh, health. I just bait out a heavy attack. A couple more hits. Kingpin 98% and everything is happening just fine. And uh, now my final fight, which is a mini boss here on the Hazard Shift. Uh, I believe it's Hazard Shift Incinerate Poison. And that is Infamous Iron Man. I was actually somewhat worried about Infamous Iron Man because I'm not necessarily the best at dealing with this guy. But at the same time, I realized that Hazard Shift should be quite helpful. I'm going to activate an invulnerability boost because, again, this is a super important war. And um, let's see how it goes down. Obviously, this is a rank 5 Kingpin, rank 4 Infamous Iron Man. And now Hazard Shift is uh, already enabling me to get my overpower buff. As soon as that is active, my damage is obviously significantly improved. A couple of rage stacks there. Drop my level 1, which puts a fairly hefty degen, 1000 damage per tick. That does remove or lessen the amount of hazard shift triggers, but I don't mind because in between the degens, in between him being power locked after his specials, and me still having plenty of rages because Kingpin is SIG 200. Uh, the fight is just going by quite quickly. I drop a level 2. Unfortunately, there are two incinerates that did not get convert, did not get shrugged off immediately. But soon after they do, so I push him to another level 2, take that on block, go in. That's a nice 24k medium right there. Block bait, a heavy attack. And there, um, I actually didn't have any degens, but he didn't trigger his regen. And that is because uh, for Alliance for Defense purposes and the fact that Hercules is whitelisted, um, I did have one, one point in Assassin. And that was it for me. And we actually ended up finishing this entire war uh, with another one death clear as an Alliance. As a Bal group, this was the second donut that we had in a row. And we beat JA, which we were incredibly happy with. It was 4-1 as the final score. And uh, now we are also 4-1 in the season. So we have one loss against Salty, but one death, basically. Had uh, 
we died one time less, we would have won on time that match as well. So that loss really does sting. Uh, but it is what it is. So at the moment, uh, we're doing fairly well. Uh, but obviously, this is just the first half of the season. We need to keep up the same and improve even more. Obviously, I have so far died once uh, in the season, which is a stupid, silly death. Uh, but hopefully we're gonna keep that at one as well and uh, that's it so far how is your alliance for season going thus far i know that some alliances had issue with auto enlisting i want to see if anything gets done with that i might make a video on it as well but in general i hope that everybody is having their uh, best possible seasons and uh, yeah that's it for this video um see you soon guys Hello there guys and welcome back to the channel. So we have all the information about